What does it say? I can see. Oh, it says we live. Hello. Welcome, everybody. Today is Sunday, June 16, uh, June, 19. June 19, 2016. And I'm Max, and I have a wonderful audience here live in San Diego and online. I need different glasses. I can see that. Just a to fit everybody, I had to have a computer far, and I need special glasses to see computer far. Oh, I can see you guys. So we have today, hey, Carolina. Hey, Joe, nice to have you. Hey, Carol, nice to have everybody. Hey, Pavel, здравствуйте, Pavel. And please introduce yourself. Again, now we are to the live audience. Hello, everybody. I'm Jitender. Hi, I'm Elizabeth. Hi, I'm Maya. Hi, right, and I'm Max. And I need to. Oh, no, it's too much. I don't want to see my knees. That's maybe how it works. All right, so. Eugene, let's start with chanting. Okay. Uh, you know, I had uh, basically, I tried to plan it out, and they just said, go high, as high as you can. Because you can't rationalize it. It's not rationalizable. Tran! Hey, Tran! Hey, Tran! Uh, Welcome. Hi, Ron. <laughs> nice to have you. So today we have our first ever channeling class. I know, I think around in the universe there are some other channeling classes, but this would be first I, I know of. And that's for what it would be certainly first for me. Um, how do you think it would be Om? Let's the Om, just regular Om. Yeah, maybe three. Three of yeah. them? Yeah, just start your your your, your Om and I will second. Okay. All right. Let's try and straighten out our backs. Rooting down, stretching up. Checking in with our breath. Expanding. We're going to go through three rounds of OM. We're going to draw it out. Let's inhale. And exhale. And inhale to begin. Welcome, my friends. Uh, we are starting our first channel in class. This is still Max. The first question is why to channel, right? And that question is undefined. There is no simple answer. You have to decide for yourself. You have to decide for yourself. It is useful and it is useless. It is useful in a way that it is a new tool, a new permission slip, a new connection to the infinite. 
and it is useless in a way that you cannot gain much from it. You can gain happiness, guidance, but you can't sell it really. You can't really sell it. You can't really channel uh, abundance directly through that. So it can be used only for the purposes of the spirit and in the service in the service of the spirit to the spirit and basically you channel the spirit the spirit's will and when the spirit wants when it, when it's good for the creator's plan it works when it doesn't align with the creator's plan it works in a imperfectly it works imperfectly so so that's a short answer so you basically decide for yourself um what is it what is channeling and the channeling is it can be in many forms and one of the first steps is basically a psychic reading uh, clairvoyance intuition uh, psychic awareness, psychic messaging, psychic obtaining of the answers, answering, asking questions, getting the answers. And on that, only after that it is trans-channeling, which is what Jim does when you allow the spirit to possess your body. And possess in a good sense, basically. Possess in a good sense, basically. Um, basically, allow the spirit to be in charge of the body for a short while with permission. And that is the gate when the spirits, the angels, the extraterrestrials, the hum discarnate human souls, all uh, voices of creation come through. So these are ma major, major um, ideas. And now I would invite questions and discussion, and then we'll go from there. Ayala, Hana, prepare your questions, and we'll we'll we'll. We'll start from from the questions. Yala hala na yala na hana yana hala na yana hala la i na. Our eyes are full of fire. That is the fire of the creator, of the goddess. That fire penetrates all the creation. That light creates all the creation. Our, our eyes are full of the creation light. Everything you see, everything you are, all physical objects, objects, all the waves are made of that fire. We speak that fire, we breathe that fire, and that fire comes through us to transform and enlighten and illuminate the creation. All right, comments, questions. Maya, how do you do your psychic work? For me, typically, I go into more of a theta brainwave state. And then um, I expand my energy field, and um, I either try to call someone in or just kind of see what comes to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you worry about protection, self-protection? I usually do a little protection first. How do you do this? Um, sometimes I ask the angels for protection. Sometimes I do like a four-direction protection. How do you do this? Well, that one I haven't done in a long time, but that's you ask for the pillars from the north, south, east, and west for protection, and mm -hmm. then also asking um, the archangels um, for protection. Mm -hmm. um, but like with the theta healing, I do sometimes I can do a, like a bubble of protection. I mean, there's different ways to protect it. You mm -hmm. know, with your intention, you can protect yourself too. Right. Yeah. 
So you can go through a ritual, mm -hmm. or you can just intend it, right? Mm -hmm. Mm. For me, it is very important to be, to feel how pure you are, and intend to be pure. And when you are pure, you are protected. And usually, I'm not. Like half an hour ago, it was a mess, right? I was full of worries. And. I think I learned it only very, very recently, and I learned that skill by kayaking. So the major understanding for me was that the ocean is alive. And when you go kayaking and you're afraid of waves, you're dealing not with random nature, you're dealing with consciousness. And that consciousness, that ocean, is you, right? Everything is you. So. You create that ocean. And for it to be nice to you, you have to be nice to yourself. You have to shift yourself in a state of being where you are one with the ocean, basically. It's not that it will not turn you over, but at least it will turn you over in a nice way to give you a nice experience. So that's basically a wonderful lesson for channeling. It's, it could be dangerous if you're in the wrong state. It could be wonderful if you're in the right state. state. So, so be in the right state. And to shift to the right state, my um, recent path is chanting. I just start chant like that, like hum, hum. And the waves oblige. The waves just go nicely and I am I'm all one with the ocean and I seem to be nice to it and and that kind of brings me to the higher state. Uh, the second part, the second path to to get into that state is Reiki. Reiki, energy healing, energy work, yoga is all one. Qigong, Tai Chi is all one. So so doing the energy work is is the major path. Right, so that's how Jim got into channeling. You know that story very well. You don't know, but Jim is our channeling guru, mm -hmm. channeling superstar, and for him, channeling is now like, like, switching. You know, lifting the the, the receiver on the phone. So, Jim, so who do you want to speak with? Ask Jim, and then, and then you speak to. Wonderful consciousnesses, wonderful. So, so and initially it was exhausting him. So I I teach because I was with Jim when he learned, and for him it was pretty much a year of hard work to, together. So, and until it flows, at least for Jim, for for us who are older guys, it is it takes commitment, hard work to together. Was it hard for you? What? to start psychic work? Was it work or just easy? Um, it is always a little bit of work, but um, for me too, it, I go in and out. Sometimes I'm very psychic and sometimes I'm not so connected, so it's work, especially if you're not so connected. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if it is a work, I mean, there are two, two types of channels. Some that do as work and some as do this as breathing, right? You can just you cannot channel. If you are a Reiki healer, it's it's really painful not to be a Reiki healer, right? If you are psychic, it's really painful not to be a psychic, right? You feel like you are blind, basically, if you're not in that state. So you, I, you know, if I don't psychically connect, creatively connect to the universe, I I feel like suicidal, right? Yeah, yeah. Why else would I be here? <laughs> So I have a question about Jim. Yes. So you said that for about a year there was some work that he needed to put in to get to this right. this place in his practice. Where was he before this year of practice? Ah, uh, uh, that's a good question to Jim, but I know the answer. So the yeah, Jim is hey Theresa, Theresa. Hey. 
So Jim is uh, very much a saint. He is always in that wonderful child mood, most often, unless he is he lost his glasses. But otherwise, he's like he's you know a child. Uh, when first I saw Jim, I th thought that you know he's pretending to be childish. That you know how can be how could you be so forward going and so trusting, right? So being trusting to everyone, to everything, being in good mood like a child, that, that was him. And, you know, he prayed for real. I mean, he, you know, he prays, that's his, his way of life. Whatever happens, he would pray, like in a very traditional, I don't remember his religion, but one of either Catholic or Protestant religion, yes. He would just say classical prayer, Outlining his wishes and and they listen, yeah, because he's just you know that simple. He's you know he's that simple, and um, he was always kind of hearing the voices, but ashamed and afraid until I gave him permission. Right, I I said yeah, channel now. He was giving messages, but kind of you know like being afraid to give messages at least. In mo for most in most cases, and now he he got the permission. So I guess we go to that point. Mm. Initiation. All right, I will give you a permission to channel. Uh, if if you do need it, if you don't, then it would be just another introduction to my friendly spirits. And now I do everything through chant, so it will be just chant to give you permission to I'm, I'm channel. Yes? Oh. Carl? Sorry, yeah, nothing. I... Yes, oh, thank you. So, Allah la la ina you are given permission to channel you have the permission to channel you have the permission to channel amen Alohanae Una Ailana Ailana Hana Hayana Hailana Alana Olana Hala Hallana Alahola Hala Ula 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 Aina And it is that simple. You go forward, go on your path, and start doing psychic work. Continue your psychic work. Expand your psychic work. Build on your psychic work. So the idea of chakras is essential for channeling as well. The root chakra is a survival chakra. Everyone is born here on physical plane with the root chakra activated, that survival one. That's how you survive. You do physical work, you eat. That's the motivation for survival. The second chakra is
developed later, and it is simple, primitive, old human communication. That's what we hear on television all the time, blah, 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 blah. The people just learn how to use second checker to talk simple way, blah, 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 advertisements, second checker, trade negotiations, sales, the work through second chakra. Then you develop the third chakra. You can develop it in this life, but more, most likely you have developed it really well in many past lives as a manager. It's a manager's chakra. It's old human hierarchical management. The chakra of warriors, rulers, kings, princes, household rulers, team leaders, so the chakra. And then the heart chakra develops and adds a shift to the new humanity, to the future humanity, to the humanity of love and connectedness, to telepathy, empathy. And that's chakra which we are using for Reiki healing. When we use our hands, that comes through the heart entrance to the to our physical body, and that's the soul working through the antenna of our nerves and bones and muscles, but mostly the bones, the crystals of our bones, are sending the electric impulses which are transformed to etherical impulses from the heart. So most of the energy healing comes directly from the heart. And then you shift to the throat chakra, and that's channeling. That's psych psychic work and chanting. But obviously you use all others. You connect to the higher levels through your top chakra. You connect through your third eye, through your eyes, through your ears. You connect through your mind. You connect and interpret. You have to basically interpret what the spirit tells. You allow them to enter and speak through your mind, translate their message to understandable experience. So all chakras are working, but primarily it is the work of the fifth of the fifth throat chakra. So Reiki healing, energy healing, is a wonderful path to to psychic abilities. It allows you to energize, to open, to connect to your energy bodies. And that opens other connections. Healing is a miracle. It is obviously a miracle. And it is permitted Why? You know, most, most miracles are not permitted in this reality, but some are. So healing is one of the miracles which is permitted. It is usually given as an option. You don't heal as a necessity. You heal as offering an option to a person to heal, right? So you don't force on anyone the healing. You offer and they take it. And the same thing with the channeling. It is one of the miracles which is offered and people either take it or not. And that's how the miracles are allowed here in this reality. They are always optional and there is always an option to exit for, for the skeptic. And we just respect it. We never say, yeah, you know, I was right. We don't say, it's not right to say that. We say, here is an option for you to believe. Here is a direct message from the spirit. You can take it or you can ignore it. We respect your choice, basically. The free will is respected. The spirit respects the free will and understand the whole reality is an illusion.
this reality is illusion. The real reality is the spirit. We here play the illusionary game. And in this game, the rule is everybody volunteers to lose the connection to the spirit and then discover it again. So we are the ones who offer that option to discover the spirit. So we say, here is an option. And people can take it or not. And usually people are guided to us to ask questions and get that answer, get that little bit of miracle. And that gives them an upgrade, gives them opens a next door so they can proceed on their path. That's how I see it from now, from here. My huge understanding was that, you know, the spirits that come, the beings, the angels, the messengers of God, they are not, uh, even the extraterrestrials, they come to these dimensions not as bodies, but as energy, right? So not something fixed, tangible, but the sound, the energy, the vibrations, the they're everywhere, in every particle, in every electron. They penetrate this dimension because they're not from this dimension. So the natural state of them is the vibration. And then they can present themselves as an image, but it is only for you to grasp. It's not really their native state here. Their native state here is everywhere, distributed, a wave. All right, questions, comments, please. I have a question, Max. Oh, thank you. A friend of mine was explaining this some time back that um, <clears throat> somebody that she grew up, um, the two of them were in a discussion about healing, and my friend was coming to a point where she could detect and diagnose serious illnesses such as cancer, and she believed, and her friend believed, that she was going to come to a point where she could cure cancer. Mm -hmm. And this friend of mine thought that it was it sounded to me like she thought it was overstepping some kind of boundary or it was too much responsibility and she she still works in healing but she is not um, followed through on being able to cure cancer to that degree what would your advice to somebody in that position be? All right. absolutely yep yeah. All right, the question is unanswerable. Uh, first, we have to give up here. It's like, uh, that is something which is, again, from this, from this state of being, it's unanswerable. It is something which is not from this reality, basically. It is a miracle which is way a few steps higher. So, Yes, of course, it is possible to cure cancer by energy healing, of course. And here is, here is a, uh, fro a story which is from Krishna Das. I, I love Krishna Das's story. So Krishna Das sings. I'm blanking. What what, what he sings? He, kirtan. Kirtan. Yeah, that's the word. Thank you. He sings kirtans. He's famous for singing kirtans. He's an American who translated the the art of kirtan to Westerners, and it became possible to to sing his way with him, and and it became. He was the first, and then it became wonderfully popular. But second thing is he, he, he gives workshops where he talks. And I love the way he talks. There is so much wisdom in what he teaches. So here is the story. His guru, Maharaji, uh, yeah, was like... Uh, like one of the saints who was doing miracles all the time. He was always present in a, in a state of miracle. Uh, 
once uh, this, uh, the follower ca came to, to, to Maharaj and asked, and asked him for a cure for uh, his father, uh, saying that the father has uh, some, some bad sickness and uh, he's suffering. So, and um, Maharaj, he, he usually used fruits for the healing. So he gave banana, said, you know, come home, make a little pay, paste from this banana and give it to your father. So the follower did that, and the father peacefully died right away. So, you know, and the lesson here is from the higher perspective, sometimes the exit is what is missing. The, the permission to exit is more important than that the healing. Um, there was another story, very similar, from a different parallel, independent um, line of gurus. Uh, there was one of Indian enlightened yogis and he had a, a school for young boys, yogi school for young boys and they had animals and this yogi liked a deer, a little baby deer and this baby deer lived with him in his room and he was liked by all the boys so when he went away for some thing, he asked the boys not to feed, overfeed the deer. Said, you know, he had enough food, don't he feed him more. So when he came back, one of the small boys, you know, fed him um, milk and the deer was dying from overeating the milk. So that yogi, he prayed with all his heart asking for healing for that deer. And the miracle happened that the deer was cured right away. Like, you know, after a few hours it was cured and came back to life. And all the boys were happy. And everybody was happy. The same night, he was sleeping or meditating and the deer came back to him, the spirit of the deer, and said, please let me go. Basically, their message was that the path of this deer, the lesson he, was, he came to teach was done and he wanted to proceed to the next step in his spiritual life. So that's what he did. He basically called the boy, said, you know, the deer wanted to go. And as soon as he said, the deer started walking to him and fell on the floor and died. So um, there are many stories like that, but the death is is something often in uh, what is it, providence, in the higher providence, is it how you say it? Divine providence. Divine providence and um, you you basically you can decide for them. You only ask for, again psychically you ask whether it's right or not right to to do the cure and you are the, you're only the channel basically, you are not the one who does deciding, you're not the one who does the cure. You are not the one who does the cure. You are the healer who comes there and petitions the spirit. That's the idea. Petition. And then whatever divine providence is, you just help it to happen. And that's about it. So, yeah, if it is intended for the cancer to be cured, then then you can do that. And if it's not, then not. You know, right now I'm dealing with a similar, just recently, similar thing came up and uh, I do what I can and then I stop. And it was hard decision for me because for me it was, you know, the image of my mother dying from cancer, right? So, so it was one of the hardest or the hardest 
um, how do you call it, uh, tough moments in my life, right? And now there was an opportunity to kind of to resolve it, and I just realized it's not it's not my my duty to do that. I I can do only that much, and then it's up to their uh, client, the patient, to to cure themselves or not. I gave them all the answers. I gave them all the love and all the energy, but then. They are they, their cancer is in their mind. Basically, they created cancer by themselves. I, I cannot live the life for them. I cannot change their path in life. I cannot make them heal themselves, right? Because it is their usually it's in the mind, and then it is elsewhere. Usually, it's first it is the trauma which comes from perception. It comes from how you perceive your life, how you interpret your path and and that, that trauma then manifests in the blockage in energy and the blockage in energy manifests in genetic mutation which manifests in stuff and then and then immune system becomes confused so it's it's a multiple path but you know there are spirits who are responsible for giving human the disease and these are very wise experienced enlightened spirits they are not nasty bad ones they are here for service. They're part of this illusion. So they're part of the decision. So you basically talk to them and say, here is my I petition. And then, you know, they are on the other side having all the maps and charts and agreements. Those are the answer. Is it the answer, right? I think, um, yes, of course, you know, when it is appropriate, of course it is possible. Max. Yes. I also remember uh, one of uh, Jim's stories where he was doing Reiki for a woman uh, dying of cancer, and she accepted it, and she just wanted the Reiki to make it ease her passing into spirit. And so, um, yeah, th that that story just came to my mind. So, like you said, it depends on the patient and whether or not they're going to allow it but it could also just be that like same thing with the deer like they 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 accept their path they know their path and you say okay well i'm going to do this reiki for you and it's it's whatever you want it to be is is what will happen and and then well you know if all of a sudden then they're cured and they're going to be walking around great i mean it was never up to the the healer in the first place right yeah, right now we have our dearest. So the story you mentioned was about about our dear friend Jean. Yeah, she yeah. left. Yeah. And um, you know, before that, our wonderful Reiki healer friend went away, and he was all powerful, all connected. He was there all the time, but by some reason he chose to to leave through cancer. I don't know. Uh, and now we have our dearest uh, teacher, Jim and I, and I um, Barbara. She she is uh, going through that, and um, we give what we can. And then yeah. it's up to her and her path and her uh, higher helpers to to help there. My lesson that I get from all these stories is that regardless of the circumstance that you're in, no matter how it looks, it's it's just another opportunity to choose love in whatever the circumstance happens to be. Yeah. Yeah. Here is a little another story um, from Krishna Das. Uh, his guru, sitting with his this, um, followers, um, uh, having normal time and then he starts crying from for no reason very what did it work passion passionately passionately. passionately passionately and then um, and then he explains uh, he's in such in pain so he was telepathically connected with another guru who was dying from cancer so by some reason that was his path to exit and he was surrounded by students the other guru and um, they wanted him to go through all the uh, Western type of treatments. And he said, if you like, I can do that. As, as a yogi, I can do that. And, uh, 
but I, the only thing I wouldn't use any an, uh, anesthesia. So, so he went through all the pains, all the surgeries, all the stuff, and then he said, "Now you did what you did. I helped you to clear your conscience that you did what you wanted to do, and now it's time to, for me to go." So he he exited the body, but but his final hours were in pain. So so that was transparent for the for the uh, for these people. It was all transparent. It's all part of the lesson for others. They just uh, went through the steps to to obey the rules of the game, basically. Many of them have that, um, I don't know the words, but conscious exit. They just know when it, when it is time to go, for, so they exit from the completely healthy body. They just decide to go, and in presence of their students, they say, now I go, and uh, leave, leave all the business in good shape and say, you know, what to do with their bodies, and, and just leave the body. I think that would be like actually ideal for, for humans. That's what extraterrestrials do. And when it is time for them to change the body, they just do like that. They they exit the body and when they enter the new body they they keep the memories. So the extraterrestrial children are basically adults in children's bodies, so they they're much wiser than our old men. They they have all the experiences of their past lives, so the death for them is is just changing of the body. Any comments, questions so far? So right now we're mostly talking about people, and in some cases like the deer, um, beings that have an awareness of their soul mission or their path, or that they even have a choice mm -hmm. in such things. And so I suppose then by what we're talking about, that when we are um, talking about healing people that may not be aware of these things, they just see themselves as being sick or not sick, living and dying. Um, yes. The idea of how, how far to go with healing them is really going to have to come from gui your guidance, right? Right. Okay. Yeah, you always have lots of opportunities. It's not a mem momentary decision. You, yeah, for me it was many, many sessions with someone until I really have to like learn the lesson and realize. So, hmm. so usually it's not one session. Mm -hmm. It's uh, you have all the opportunity to speak to higher forces and understand what's what's the situation. And sometimes you don't understand. You just get the guidance without even understanding. That makes sense. Because I've sat, I don't do much in the way of healing myself, but you know, in going to sessions, there are times when, you know, more often than not, there are times when somebody will say, "Okay, guidance says that's enough for you today." And that's you know, that's all I'm allowed to do for you today. You have enough to integrate. Mm -hmm. And so then, I guess it depends on the guy that you're working with, right? Right. And so, to a degree, if you or to ask a guide, a specific guide, a specific question, and then ask another guide that same specific question, you could potentially come up with a different answer, right? Of course. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know. And then you, thank you for prompting another topic. Uh, how do you interpret the channelings, right? Yeah. Uh, that was, for me, a huge stumbling point. I studied lots of channelings. And I had a big crisis when I just realized they don't match each other. <laughs> you know, does it happen to you that you know different psychic readings just say the opposite things? Like different people give a different reading and yeah, yeah different information. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> how do you, how do you deal with that? Well, I go by the ones that feel like they're right. Uh -huh. Because there are certain ones that just don't feel like it's a match. Sometimes. All right, so you say this one is good and this one is bad, right? Make a judge. Well, it, it's not aligned with what I feel is uh -huh. going on. Yeah. How do you deal with conflicting messages from the spirit or from extraterrestrials? Uh, I couldn't answer that by my own experience, but in reading uh, recently, references throughout the book about connecting with higher level guides and lower level guides. Uh -huh. So I guess it's, it's just maybe a nicer way of saying good or bad. Ah. 
not not really though, but uh-huh. but that's what comes to mind. Thank so, you. So um, so as a healer, you're letting through information, or you're letting you're letting through the ability to heal. Is that right? Oh, that. Yeah, I just shifted from the idea of healing to idea of channeling extraterrestrials and others. Oh, okay. But yeah, you know, as a healer, your intention is to heal, and then what whatever happens, you accept basically. So you do your job. Um, there, you don't really decide decide much. You just decide, you know, do we have next session or not? You know, if, if the patient asks for, for healing, you give it anyway, right? So you don't decide not to give the healing. Okay. But you accept whatever outcome is. You give them the answers they, you feel, I mean, usually the Reiki healing or whatever energy healing comes with some sort of consultation. For me, it's a huge part. Consultation advice is a huge part. But I realized I have to translate my experience to their their need. Yeah, for them, it's often just a different language, different. Um, I don't give them all their lecture on all the design, metaphysical design of the universe. Mm-hmm. I usually say, you know, when I was in that situation, I did that. Or when my friend was in this situation, they did that. And that's basically the type of the advice I give. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But again, it's always, I say, it's always your choice. It's always your lesson, you know. In Reiki, I think it's the dominant theme. You come here as a soul to experience lessons, to experience life. So, so do experience. So, to experience, you have to make choices. That's the main property of Earth experience: to make choices. So, the reality is an illusion, but experience is real. Experience is is what survives after the life. Experience, the knowledge, the making of the decision is real, while the lessons are just illusionary game. So, Max, taking some of those ideas you just mentioned uh, and uh, put, transferring them over to the idea of channeling, then for someone who's just getting started, uh, like myself, I have my reasons uh, for that I want to do channeling, which are um, simply just uh, to make friends as well uh, as well as uh, you know uh, help and guidance with uh, my Reiki and stuff so then would it I mean from my perspective from what I'm hearing is that uh, I would just you know it might be best for me to simply make an invitation and then whoever comes I just accept it or you know because I don't really, I don't really care where my helpers or my guides come from. I don't really feel drawn to say, "Oh, well, I would like, uh, you know, uh, a Reiki healing friend who's going to help me from, you know, this particular galaxy or or whatever." I mean, it's... right? Hold on a second. We have battery low. I will replace the battery. We outside. I have a replacement battery. Okay. And we continue your question after we come back in uh, five minutes. So we have okay. a, a little break. I don't think so. Maybe we can ask her.
did my uh, image change? I think I was as a uh, human colony. Now I'm coming at the Stanberg. Is it? No, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Okay. I wasn't looking directly at the screen, but it seemed like something shifted. Maybe one of the lights came on in the back, or I don't know what happened. Yeah, the lights. Is that what you Is that what you meant? No. Yeah, there is technology there. Okay. Like you have to log in as a proper account, and I think I'm good. Okay. Can me lower the screen? I can do that. Hey, we are back. Um. Okay, yeah, so uh, the idea that I was just uh, bringing up uh, was uh, the idea of um, for, well, I'll just speak for myself, and I, I'm maybe it applies to people or maybe they want to do it a different way, but for me, I was thinking about what reasons I want to channel, and I have those reasons quite clear, and then I just basically make the invitation, and whoever whoever is going to show up is going to show up, and I don't have any real uh, expectations or specific limitations on it. I'm just open to anything within those parameters of what my reasons are and what I'm saying. I'm alignment. Uh, what what I'm saying, I'm in alignment with. So it's more a statement than a question, right? Uh, yeah, I guess I just wanted to see if, if uh, that was anyone else was thinking the same things or if they have, I want to connect with this one specific being. Like say, for example, um, if, I want, if I wanted to say channel to Kerr, I could just, I could make that request. And, I mean, maybe she's busy, maybe she's not. Like, you know what I mean? Like there's two ways to do it. Like you can just say, I have these themes, and whoever's going to come is going to come. Or you can also be very specific and say, "I want this person," and you're just going to keep knocking on the door until they answer. You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely right. I agree. Okay, so either way makes sense. Just whatever you want to do. Anybody comment on that? Where do you want to go? Well, I know. Everybody's heard of Bashar, I'm sure, and um, it sounds like he came into this life with a specific agreement to channel, you know, well, Daryl came into his life to channel Bashar, and it sounds mm -hmm. like that was part of the agreement from the get-go. Mm -hmm. And But otherwise, I hear that as well. It sounded like before we took a break, you were saying that you weren't as concerned with where your guidance or assistance was coming from, as long as you are able to let it through. Yeah, and it's in alignment with the certain themes that I'm saying that I basically am um, asking for. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> All right. I will. I guess I will share my my experience with channeling. So. Oh, so I get psychic answers pretty pretty easily, right? I just you know I was good in school. That's how I did my um, math in classes. I just would meditate on the answer and it would come. It was not a logical process and that was so familiar path and you know I was in math school with very harsh math training. It was like more like boot, mathematical boot camp, yeah. Like uh, 7th to 10th grade it was in America it would be like 8th to 11th grade. Uh, it was a mathematical boot camp so there was like two students in the class who could get there get the answers and I was one of the two so I think it was a wonderful training and I knew I couldn't get there by hard work it was just you have to meditate on it so you kind of close the eyes touch your ear and you just get there and then I had experience with um, poetry so I wrote poetry in waves along my life and prose as well um, and in poetry, it is, you know, I can analyze it, right? I, re I read poets, and I can see if it is hard work grounded or if it is spirit inspired. It's like really obvious sometimes. Like sometimes you can hear the voice of the spirit between the lines, between the sounds, just in a way the 
the world they aligned, it can be by chance. No human calculation can put the spirit in these words. Only when the spirit is there, the words magically arrange, arrange so you can see the signature of the angel. That's how it works. So, you know, and same thing when I create the poetry. When I write it intentionally, it's, it's human. When I let the spirit go through, it is spiritual, right? And for me, the easiest path for that was rollerblading. I was doing the rollerblading and composing my poetry. So it has to align with the, with the movement. And if you don't rollerblade right, you fall down. You have to really keep that, that movement. And then I uh, watched, um, it's Out on a Limb, Out on a Limb by uh, Shirley MacLean. And there, there is a channeler who always does that, um, you know, that, that movement. So there is one movement here, and there is one other movement here. So there is that period which invites the spirit. So that shifting, that, that vibration or overlap of two vibrations is the way to invite the spirit to come through. So that was some kind of self-realization that you're working on something right. And then there was an understanding that as the poetry was a dialogue between me and the spirit. I do my step. I clearly say first two, three words, and then let the spirit say their whatever number of words. Then I go, and then they go. And it's like playing chess or checkers. And uh, so so that was, you know, life experience. I I wasn't open to extraterrestrials, but I op was open to the spirit. So now when when the, the when the spirit comes, it's it feels familiar. I, I know what to expect. I know how it feels. The goosebumps, the the vibration in certain parts of the head. And for different spirits, it would be right part, of, uh, different right, different parts of the head. Jim, like says, Bashar always comes from right, and uh, someone else comes from some other part, and um, so they all have their signature. For uh, my uh, hybrid daughter out there, it's uh, a certain pattern of light when she comes in in my mind. So, so it's uh, you recognize them by that. You don't really have to hear the name. And I'm not very good in, in hearing. When when I hear them, I wake up, basically. I, it so is, um, how do you say? When it is audible, it is so exciting that I, I, I get out of the state. So so usually, they, you know, if they need to communicate to me, they communicate very sadly, they, subtly. They give me the, the answers without giving the, the direct message, the words one by one. So that's how it works. So when I started Max, channeling... I this, yes. yes. So you mentioned that uh, it's important to understand your chakras when you're channeling. So uh, which chakras and in what kind of state of health is like the minimum acceptable? Because I oh, have a suspicion my, my throat one is pretty blocked. But my crown is pretty open. So can I still channel? Wonderful question. Yes, you can channel. Um, do you really need to understand chakras for channeling? Not, you don't have to. It's just a nice door to, to get to the good state. Of course, you don't have to. You don't have to, you know, some people, you know, they... Uh, natural channelers, they don't analyze, you know. For them, for, if you already can channel, you don't really have to take that class, right? <laughs> if you have the telephone line to the spirit, you don't have to take that class. This is for the ones who, who go my path, which is harder, yeah. Which is like you grow up in a normal human and then you open their door one by one. So, so that's the chakras, the... Uh, the healing, the Reiki, the energy healing, it's 
it's an easy path to just go step by step and develop it. So as I, as I mentioned, you develop your spirit usually from bottom up, but some children are born, as, as you mentioned, with open crown chakra. So for you, might be it might be the problem not to start channeling, but, but, but to stop channeling, right? <laughs> uh, not to deliver the message from the spirit, but then to ground yourself back to life so you can really remain functional and healthy. So understanding your chakras and being a healer is also important because you you have to keep yourself in good shape, right? Mm -hmm. How do you keep yourself in good shape? Energetically? Uh, Health-wise. Health-wise? Um, well, eating lots of plant food is very high vibrational, so that helps. So getting the high nutrition, getting making sure you have enough minerals so your energy is high, enough hydration, um, because all those things, um, if you're dehydrated or if your minerals are off, it's harder to do all of that. Jit, how do you do this? I'm strong, still trying to work all that out. I've got, you know, I know for certain I have energetic blockages and I have physical things going on as well. So uh, I've got plenty of, plenty of work to do. All right. I'm dependent on my Reiki healers. I go to Reiki healers, you know, as frequent as I can, at least once a week sometimes three times a week and sometimes as I barter I do something for them like psychic readings and Reiki that's what I usually do I do I do Reiki psychic reading and chant at the same time so I I lift them up and upgrade whatever I can clear up whatever I can and then talk to them to help them to uh, talk through and um, through the blockages and help them cry out the cry out the, the emotional problem so that's how it works but for myself it's much easier to get help from some, someone else than to fix to myself like I fix myself every day I have that energy routine where I clean it up but I have that urge to move forward and that urge to move forward always get gets me in the situation when I get on myself something which I cannot clear up. Yeah, that's 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 my uh, typical problem. So I, if I accumulate something, then I urgently need someone to, to help out. So I, I have, you know, as soon as I arrive to the new city, I find a Reiki healer which 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 can do miracles. Yeah, in Rochester it was Barbara and Jim. In Chicago it was uh, Lucia. Yeah, Lucia is is extraordinary and in uh, San Diego it's Raina. <laughs> Raina is amazing. Um, so is that the only way that you do you work on your energy? Oh no no whatever I can do myself I do myself like you know if if you get possessed by a spirit you you do whatever first you know hot shower I mean that works great Light. I like. I have. I bought. It's not a advice of. It's not a medical advice, but that's what I do. I bought a red lamp, LED lamp, huge one from China, with uh, which is gives out three watts of uh, of uh, red pure red light. Uh, it's for plant growth and. Um, I, I just grow like a plant. Yeah, I just put it on myself, and that basically charge, recharges the blood. Obviously, you can buy made for humans, but this one was like a deal, like for sixty dollars you get three watts, and for humans for three hundred dollars you get one twentieth of that. So you get lots of red light, and that 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 kept me going. Yeah, it was in, in hard times. I got it like several times a day. You just recharge yourself and. And that works. I have other wonderful tools, but this one was, you know, the workhorse. The foods, obviously, like healing foods. I, I have a huge assortment of spices, and my secret component is fenugreek, coriander, and 
What's the name? Caraway seed. Fenugreek, coriander, caraway seed, uh, and, and several other components, but these are three ones. Coriander, fenugreek, caraway seed. Ground and coffee maker and um, eat tons of that, as much as like it feels good, but but that is a, a miracle mixture. Comes from, uh, you know, from all, all, all of those, those places, like the, it's actually a Georgian place in Caucasus. That's the Georgian land, land, land signature. So, meditation, like, three, some days I do four times a day, I do deep meditation, like, like, I, there was like critical days, you get through two hours of work, then meditation, another two hours of work, another meditation. Prayer, om, chanting. You lose your mind, you lose the connection, you lose the balance. Om I'm sure I was a shaman in many lifetimes. So, so shamanism, like drumming and music, works great with me. So some days I just go on voice, like uh, I exploit the, the sound, exploit the music. Krishna Das is my major healing. So for a couple of months I was living only on Krishna Das. It was, uh, it was instead of coffee, like, oh, coffee plus Krishna Das, yeah. Coffee club, Krishna Das workshops were amazing. Bashar is also very, very healing and energizing. Stones, you know, you know, whole whole repertoire of healing, of course. Oh, so, and then I started channeling on human colony, and what I did, I did practice with trusted friends. And when you one on one, it's off off record. It's it's much easier. So go to our uh, chat on Skype and chat on uh, Google Hangouts and. Say whoever is available, I'm ready to channel, and people just jump in, and we did practice channeling. It was fun. I felt like energies were coming in, but again, with, as with Jim when he started, they burn you because you are not pure, because your muscles are not trained, your channels are not clean, so so they burn you. Like I, I would channel for an hour, and then I was sick for a day. That's how it was. Yeah, and then I realized. You know, until you grow all your proper muscles and channels, you it's it's like you know uh, electricity. You it burns you, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Right. Until until it's like feels like nature. Until it feels like breathing. For Jim, it feel feels like breathing. But they had to work on him. Like at some point, they put him implants. Our ex alien friends they put him implants in the throat and said it's for channeling. And he says, it hurts. I can't tolerate it. Take it out. So they said, yeah, all right. We'll give you some anesthesia. We will modify the implant. But after that, you know, the difficulty disappeared. He Now he has a like telephone line to anyone, which is, <laughs> I feel jealous. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as, 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 as uh, they said, you know, you know, I, Everyone has his own path. I'm more like a facilitator than, uh, than you know, he's a workhorse of channel and I'm, I'm a helper. But I was there when he was doing the channel. I was the one who was doing Reiki on him, basically. I did Reiki afterwards to bring him back to, um, to balance. So he was do we were doing the channel, so it was combined. He would do a channeling session, and then I would do Reiki to recover him. And that session was on recording and then we published. First we recorded on audio and then we recorded on, you know, as you know, video with people. But first it was recorded on on camera and then we published it later. 
it actually really helps like you know I feel like it from my experience if you do live or record and publish right away it's that time is keeps the connection close uh, the 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 link is very tight so whatever you publish is aff affects people and if you like it you get a lot of love if they don't like it or scared you get a lot of pain and fear so so that connection is still you're still connected to that reaction you understand right you put yourself out and depending how people react on what you put out you feel the response em emphatically through empathy empathically and uh, the trick was I would let that recording sit for a month or two or three or four or five and then publish and then you don't feel that feedback so yeah I'm very sensitive to uh, to what I do online no it's wonder those recordings came up so so many months later I've always wondered about that yeah it's self-protection it helps it's like let's know how how you do like YouTube channel and like some people are so energetic so strong so beautiful so powerful but notice many of the channelings are uh, ungrounded ungrounded they are so high so the people they, they don't cause much of negative emotion they are not interfering with anybody anybody's life they are kind of angelic so on very high there is the spirit comes there mostly like voice and uh, between the words but the words are not substantial but Jim what Jim gives is often like really really strong it's really grounded like when our reptilian friend comes Grindle ah it's like really really grounded it's real low level truth so he can do that because because of lots of energy flow and protection because it is useful but you know you have to like train yourself to be able to do that we had a couple of friends who burned themselves on channeling right we know that maybe we, we didn't public publicize that but, but there were people who just wanted psychically, psychically stable enough and use drugs so to be able to channel they had to support themselves with drugs and then that, that usually comes with a breakdown so don't do that don't do drugs and channeling it what drugs were they taking oh usually gentle ones okay. <laughs> so don't do drugs and channeling uh, do it in a healthy way but okay so that was a big decision for me not not many people do channeling classes and no one does channeling classes like we do online with open audience so that's the first time we do that thank you very much for support I I feel so energized here with, with that um, our protection with that energy and thank you for coming that is wonderful that you came so we do it why do we do it openly because I think if you offer it as a tool for life if you offer it as an additional connection to the spirit it is justified and take it easy as you ask you know are you ready for challenge yes you are that's my answer but take it easy you start easy and see where it brings you it just becomes another tool so giving psychic messages for many people became second nature right and sometimes you give it as a psychic message like you are in a special state and sometimes you just give it how do you say just a normal life right mm -hmm. and when you give it a normal life you just wrap it different it's just a different wrapper how do you wrap it what do you mean how do I wrap it I don't know <laughs> um, you know if you need to give a message to a person who didn't come for you for a psychic session but you need to give him a message um, usually I just tell them that intuitively I'm getting that so-and-so you know like right. whatever yeah that's right mm -hmm. yeah I have a friend who who does miracles in regular life like we feel like we are late for the plane and she would meditate a little 
and say, no, you'll be fine. And, you know, she changes, she doesn't read it, she changes the reality. There is a subtle difference. Sometimes you read it, and sometimes you change. Like Jim, what, what Jim does, he and Lucia, they change the reality. They don't only read the reality, they change it. So you're not late for the plane because they saw the future. You're not late for the plane because they gave you uh, nicer traffic on the way. So, but that friend, she doesn't even, uh, I think she is not even acknowledging that she is doing psychic work. She is just, it comes as a second nature, but she is in a mainstream mindset at the same time. And many of the successful business owners are, are like that, you know, or leaders. They, they do it without subscribing to all the metaphysics, but they do it very naturally. They, like Steve Jobs, I know Steve Jobs was spiritually advanced, but you know, they call their uh, his co-workers and employees a reality distortion field. Yeah, mm -hmm. he created the reality distortion field, shift the reality. So, so when you do the healing, you, you know, you shift the reality and um, and uh, you use the fact that the reality is not fixed. You are in a program. You, my favorite visualization is uh, movie The Matrix. Neo, how Neo shifts the things around, and how this little children, you know, bend the spoons. They just look at the spoons and they shift the reality so the spoon, spoon, the spoon is bent. It's not that they apply the force. They just shift us from one reality to another where things are different. Uh, yeah, that's welcome to their future. Yeah, the future is now, the future is here. Uh, the humanity is ascending. We are going from such and such dimension to the next one up. We're, going, we're shifting from one reality to another. It will take a few generations, but we already get the glimpses of the future. And that future reality is where things are malleable, where the time and space are subject to melting, melding, transforming. So, how do you adjust to your new channeling capacity? You take it easy and grow your spirit as a plant. Take it easy, give it some time, grow your spirit as if you were growing a garden. The spirit is growing as you go through your life lessons, as you proceed with time, the spiritual bodies are built and they adjust and your intention to grow your spirit is absolutely essential for that. So that energy healing which you do on yourself, that emotional work and clearing and building and smiling and working with the law of attraction, choosing the positive, melting the reality, melting the reality, adjusting the reality, following your highest excitement. It all works for the growth of the spirit. That's the final outcome. Now I know that the spirit, after you die, that spirit, that your essence is eternal. And even after you reincarnate, that personality remains. So you will be you there. You wouldn't be your new personalities. Basically, it's, it's like children. You will be the parent to your new incarnations. But you, as a parent, you will not die there. You will remain. So your new incarnations will be the new bodies which will grow. But the old spiritual body will be the same. You will be sovereign being there sovereign soul. So you will not be your previous incarnation. You will not be your future incarnation. You will be a child to your previous incarnation. You will be a father, mother to your next incarnation. 
so growing the spirit is your main job here and that's why you get life lessons that's why you get all this guidance all the experience all the pain so use that channel and capacity to grow your spirit and maybe the growth of your spirit is more important or as important as the service that you do obviously you do the channeling as a service but as you do the service to others that allows your spirit to mature to grow to expand Hey, Brian, long time no see. Hello, homo, Max. Hey, Anna, hi, Anna, hi, Brian, hola, hi, Anna, hola, hi, So, uh, can you give us a blessing? Oh, you're at the end? We are not finishing, just a blessing for continuing. We have another maybe 20 minutes to go. Who's with you, next to you? Ah, we have no one, one person less now. <laughs> he stepped out. <laughs> Who's the individual next to you? Uh, we have two. Something oh, okay. is interesting with the with the, the dark all of a sudden, huh? yeah. yeah, with the uh, video. I don't know why. That's all right. Do you want it in galactic language? Um, introduce yourself, Maya and Hi, Elizabeth. Maya and Elizabeth. Hello, Maya and Elizabeth. To nice in? to meet you. Hello, hello. And it's... Excuse me, I'm back. Hello. Oh, there you we go. go. <laughs> hey, you guys. <laughs> hello, my friends. So we're in San Diego. Oh, wow. And um, I have wonderful company. And thank you guys for being here. Thank you for co-creating this webinar. Yeah, go ahead with Galactic Language. Okay. Chilio kutunua. Yisi e kiki ale. Ni a kioko ko tuokadi, ni si liakana, iakashi lioko tua. I hia, shahia katua, ni ki ki a kakoha hai, salakunu shukutu, ukutuaka, ili ala kukuaka, shalioto noa, i ki a ko uhua hai, iakotua hai, shalion ukutuakia, shalia ye, iakunu noakati. Uh, you are just planting the seeds. You are just in the very beginning. You are the one who starts the fire. The channeling is planting the seeds. By bringing the channeling to people, you plant wonderful seeds and allow the seeds of spirit to grow and blossom like planting the seeds, like starting the fire, like beginning the new beginning, like stepping on the new road, you're blessed. And you bring amazing, extraordinary, huge, wide help from the heaven to the earth. We are here to help. We are eager to be invited. Your channeling is an opportunity for us to come and help. Your channeling opens the doors. Thank you. Thank you very much. Namaste. Thank you. So, and now we come to the dark side. So the dark side, basically, what happens if something bad happens? And the answer is, as usual, you are in charge. You create your reality. Usually, if something bad happens, it's a facet of yours. It's a side of yours. It's you. It coming. It's usually coming from your inside. It's usually you have invited it. It's something which was sitting in you just 
Pox Picks Gets Out. And so your main you is in charge. You are entitled to fix it. So if something bad happens, do something. But also, like, you know, make sure it's really bad. Sometimes it seems to be bad. Maybe it's not as bad. Like, like you know, sometimes, uh, like, when Jim channels, some beings come which seem maybe like reptilians or dragons, but if you are respectful, if, if you are diplomatic, if you are following the etiquette and uh, respect them, respect your sovereignty, your sovereignty, it works just fine because usually it's all guided, it's all your past incarnations, your another, uh, how do you call, um, m images of yourself. So you usually deal with mirrors of yourself. So you in, as, as these are your mirrors, you're in charge. Even if it comes, you know, the most scariest monster comes to you. Understand that it is this monster is you and you are capable of transforming it. That image was wonderfully shown in, in the Legend of Korra. Have you watched Legend of Korra? Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> Go watch it. It's uh, it's available if you just Type in Legend of Korra, watch online for free. It's it's even available there. And there, I think maybe season two, maybe a three, there was a wonderful image. It's like a textbook of a spirit world made into the wonderful uh, anime style of uh, anime. And there, this Korra young avatar in training, she comes to the spirit world for the first time. And then she is scared, and she sees monsters, and she starts crying, and as she cries, the beautiful spirit world become dark, becomes dark, because whatever you feel you create there, it manifests right away. Here it manifests with a little delay, and there it manifests right away. So in the spirit world, you define your reality much faster. In this world of attraction, you attract positive and negative with some delay. In spirit world, it's like it 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 happens like so. And as Bashar says, to change it, you have to smile first. You know, you don't expect the spirit world to smile to smile first. You have to smile first. Even if you are scared, smile first, and then it will reflect. So that's what her. Uh, companion taught her. She said, you know, you have to smile first. And then when she sees monsters, she says, oh, my poor doggies, let me pet you. And, and the monsters become nice pets. Like dog is, you know, the main mission of dogs here is to teach you that a monster can become a pet. Fluffy, playful. <laughs> right, so that's what you do. You are in charge. You have to transform the negative into positive. Um, that's about it. Whatever negative happens, you just, it's enough to wish, enough to smile, and chanting is, and galactic languages, do miracles, and breathing. Start breathing, start chanting, and things, wonderful things happen. Uh, you know, again, I go into the waves, and they're scary, and I chant, and they become friends. And dolphins come out. I, saw, I see dolphins now regularly. I just You come, you chant, and dolphins come to you. <laughs> yeah, it's nice. so chanting does miracles. Comments, questions? No, I like that how you're saying that uh, dolphins show up now regularly. Yeah. It's funny because I went kayaking twice in the open ocean, and um, I sort of became one with the ocean, like you were saying, and both times dolphins just surrounded the kayak. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. And you can't force them. You have to transform yourself to make it happen. Mm -hmm. Like I was in an extremely peaceful state. Mm -hmm. Dolphins are very psychic. They they hear you. Mm -hmm. 
So Brian, how do you channel? <laughs> how do I channel? Um, me, it takes a small process. It's really just focusing, having an intention first, setting the intention, um, some deep breathing, very relaxed, very peaceful, and then open up the doorway and allow it to come in. Are you in position to um, channel now a little bit? I would say yes, but not right now. <laughs> ah. But I wanted to I wanted to stop in just to see say hi to you. I missed you, and I wanted to let you know that my brother uh, Mark might be moving there to uh, either San Diego area or somewhere in California soon. Wow! So uh, yes, I'm eager to meet him. Cool. Thank you very much, Max. Thank you. <clears throat> All right. So next, next initiation. Let, let me let me initiate. So I will do a little chant and give you another initiation into channeling. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I Allahu you are a beautiful soul you are in eternally loved you came here with a mission I can accept the gift open yourself to the gift you're powerful and strong wake up to your strength wake up to your gift it's only up to you to accept this gift as much as you wish there is no limitation no, there is no limit the gift is real and limitations are illusions it's up to you how to how much to take and it's up to you to drop the illusions the illusions are just the illusions laugh smile laugh and smile and drop your limitations the fear is an illusion laugh and drop the fear the reality is your desire the reality is available for you to grab. Channeling is easy because it's not up to you what to say you provide your voice you provide your channel as a service for others and you don't have to come up with words the spirit speaks speaks through you 
you are protected, you are strong, you are one with the universe. If you wish to help, if you wish to serve, if you wish to be a channel of love, that's all you need to do is to step forward and open yourself as a channel, as a vessel of love, and the love will come through you. There is no limit of love. Love is real. Love is the substance of the creation. And everything else is illusion. Anybody? I have a question. Yay! Um, so I was um, massaging my friend the other day, mm -hmm. and um, I felt like I was suddenly transported back to, um, well, okay, so a little backstory. Um, I was aware of uh, past life that he had um, gone through mm -hmm. and um, I didn't know particulars um, but I ended up working on exactly this thought that um, this well this sword went into um, my friend's back Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. uh, when I was working on it, I was like transported into um, this space where I could, and it was like staticky TV, almost like I was here in the present, and um, but I was also like back there, mm -hmm. and there was noise, and um, uh, I could see. Um, my friend and his body, um, his current body, and then I could see sort of like glimpses of um, his uh, past body. And I was wondering, like, what to make of that. Um, and then there's... Uh, so even further than that, um, I kept massaging, um, and I'd find other spots that were wounded, mm -hmm. and um, uh, and then I um, I was working on his hands, and I think he was crucified. Uh huh. Um, because it felt like like uh, nails were coming out of his hands, mm -hmm. um, uh, and this is completely new to me. Ah, okay. Um, at least like the, I mean, I've had sort of things in the past, but nothing this tangible. Uh huh. So take it easy. That's, you know, the nature of reality. You have to get used to that. It's mm -hmm. just, you know, a common common place. So you have a routine which you have to follow through. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to do that. Anything. You don't have to do anything. As soon as you get the image, mm -hmm. it's sufficient. You don't really have to do much. Mm -hmm. It's already the healing happening because you get the connection. You get from here, you penetrate it to the cause by itself it's it heals. Uh, obviously there is a complex mechanic, there is a lot of beings who work through the death to dissociate the physical body from etheric body 
wrap it up, bring it there, and help re to recover it, and then send it back, send, send it to the new incarnation. Mm -hmm. So, and that, you know, because of the violent death, the repair wasn't complete because they weren't good in fixing it there. So, so we just complete the repair, and it's not for you to do that, it's more like for him to allow that to happen. So you can explain to him what happened, and then he allows his other bodies to heal themselves. It's it's not for physical beings. Like it's it's beyond what we do here. It's all spiritual work. So so all you do is intention to heal, and then that isn't that intention is sufficient. Yeah. That's all is needed. Intention to heal. When you know the cause, you basically already help that, and then. When it's diagnosed, the healing takes takes place by itself. So it was given to you. You gave the intention, the knowledge plus intention answer uh, results, and you know that's it, done. <laughs> and you know, of course, if if he wants to do that, it's again it's allowing that to happen. <sighs> Uh, right. Are you a body worker? Or? Um, I guess I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, discovering the healer in yourself is it's wonderful. Probably opening up for you. Yeah. 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 It'll keep opening. Cool. Yeah, take it easy. It's just a routine. You provide intention, and being pure is sufficient. Positive intention, you know, that's it. And you don't have to take. It's not your responsibility to do anything. You just mm -hmm. receive the that image that's sufficient. You don't have to take on yourself anything. <sighs> Brian, I want more I want more of your magic. You can do you can speak whatever language you like. Oh yeah, I want to share with you guys. Um, to expand on what uh, she was talking about. My friend, what is your name again? Elizabeth? Elizabeth, how are you? Yeah. Um, yes, um, always intention comes first. Um, the healing uh, at, the, at the, the degree in which the individual heals is up to them. You can send it out, a distant healing or hands-on healing, it doesn't matter, but at the, which the rate in which they heal themselves depends on their belief systems and how open how open they are to receive that healing and just by your attention that's all really all it takes just a direction and allow it just your thoughts your positive thoughts will be sufficient enough the energy and where it has to go and where it needs to go and that's okay. it that's how easy it is and don't get discouraged if they don't heal right away, or if that person or, or the pet or animal doesn't heal right away. It may take time, but it's always up to them on how they perceive it, how they choose. It's always up to them. Thank you. Yes. Okay, so we start wrapping up. Um, I um, it will take another half an hour, but um, <laughs> at least we start. <laughs> it's wonderful, Max. Right. Um, what I wanted to mention before we start finishing, I just want to see how much battery is left. Actually, I can't. Oh, plenty. All right. We have exactly. Yeah. We have enough time, over 20 minutes. Okay. But, you know, we don't have to use all of that. So the idea is that first I will announce if anybody is interested. We have um, the channeling class with Jim on Monday at 10 a.m. this time, uh, Pacific time, whatever it is, and plus plus three hours on East Coast. 1, 1 p.m. is cost. Um, it will happen here in the same uh, uh, location in the air-conditioned room there in uh, 
where we've been in the, in the other code. La it's called launch, Wi-Fi launch, launch. And um, uh, I, I welcome local participants, and um, it will be like online class. Uh, you have to sign up and pay by PayPal. I think it's now fifty dollars for participation. It it goes for um, three hours. Is that tomorrow? And Jim will part of the go ahead. Is that tomorrow, Max? Oh uh, no, a week from now. Right. Okay. Um, Monday week from now. July fourth. Is it? Oh uh, gosh. Or maybe not yet. I don't know. It's uh, Monday 27th, I think. Um, it is announced on Facebook and on uh, other sites. Uh, and then after that, there will be a Reiki class, Reiki 1 class. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention. Um, yeah, to, if, if you have any questions, max at humancolony.org is a good way to, to, to connect. So max at humancolony.org. Um, so what happens if different channelings are disagreeing with each other? So that discouraged me in the past, but then I realized that's the nature of the reality. Basically, uh, the reality is not real, it's an illusion. So the fact that channelings are don't agree, it doesn't really mean anything because they don't have to. When it comes from the spirit, from spirit perspective or from extraterrestrial perspective, the answers are not fixed. It's only we here in this 3D, we, we have that exact logic and exact fixation. So if A, then B is, if A is the cause and B is a consequence and C is a consequence and it's all straight line, all linear. And from spiritual perspective, there are permitted uh, multiple answers. And that's up to us to choose. So choosing actually is is a free choice. You can choose the answer and make it reality. And it can be something unverifiable, like like many people come to Takur, which is our leader and friend channel by Jim, and ask, you know, what star do I come from? Am I Liran or Pleiadian or, or other? And the curve gives them the answer. But basically, it's creating the reality, creating the past from from now, creating your genetics from now. And then, like Bashar usually asks, you know, would you like to be that? Mm -hmm. and, and, and how does it feel? Because you create yourself you have that flexibility and if they tell you that you are Yael and you get really 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 excited you become that so the now is created from so the channel is only a psychic assistant a spiritual assistant to to create this reality and that's how it works so reality is an illusion you cannot it cannot basically validate the channelings by the, by the rules of this reality. That's the answer. Take it easy. Uh, it's not fixed, you know. Like in Soviet Union, it, it was several times, it was first, you know, everything was God, and there were the rules, and the Tsar was on the top. And then communists came, came and they changed the past. The whole big society started believing in a new thing. Like in less than one generation, everybody believed in something new. Then a little bit later, they came back. Now everybody is religious again. And they, they again, they have a uh, Russian Orthodox Church. And they rewrite the history again. The point is that as you rewrite the history and the whole country starts believing in the new history, the past changes. That's how fluid it is. Like you travel the world and you realize that, you know, in the same globe, in the same world, as you shift from one country to another, the whole history of the, of the earth changes. It just, you know, you shift from one country to another, the language changes, the vibration changes, and the reality somehow shifts. So it's, it's fluid. You choose how to live that, that game.
it's a computer game. It's a matrix. It's illusionary. It feels very hard, but um, it's it's you know only when you're in certain state it's hard. If you lift up to the level of of the high level, it's fluid. You can shift it. I I observed that. It's Jim is great in it, and um, and you will be good too. You can shift it. You can create new new world for yourself through the law of attraction. Smile and reality will smile back. <sighs> Do you want me to expand on that, Max? Yes, please. All right. Yes, you. we all create our own reality. In what portion of it, what we choose in the moment, that's the most important thing. We use the past as a reference, a guide. That's really all we, we use it for, um, to uh, a reference point to see, ah, that's where I was, that's who I was. And now in the present, you're in the, most, the most power that you have is in the moment because you're taking command. You're, the only way you access your memories is in the now, in the moment. So now that you're in command of every, and taking full responsibility of your choices that you make, and any channeler out there, any information that's out there, you're the one that gets to choose on what works for you. Take a little bit over here or take a little bit over there. Make it your own. Make it unique. You own it. This is where command comes in. You say, ah, I heard one channel say this, but another channel says this. Why is it so conflicting? It's only conflicting because you're putting a label on it. You say it has to work this way. It has to be that way. But not for, also forgetting that ah, there's parallel realities. You see, every changing moment, from moment to moment to moment. So take a little bit of each thing that, that you gather, that work, that which works for you, and just take it. And you, you're the one that puts the spin on it. You're the one that takes the information and how you want to present it. It's yours. You own it in a way. You're taking a little bit from everyone else, and you say, ah. This is what I accept. If you accept it, if not, you choose something different. It always comes down to choice. Free will, free choice. You're in command, always, of your creations. Yes. You come to get experience. All these prompts are only for you to have the experience. So enjoy getting the experience. Make this experience the most real thing. Make the emotional part of the experiment, experience real thing. Allow yourself to really play and really have the experience. The experience is real. The, everything else is an illusion. Now we are ready to wrap up. Um, who wants to do the chanting? Can you do the chanting, right? Sure, what do you have in mind? Do you do the chanting? No? No, it's fine. <laughs> do the chanting? Jitinder is good. Jitinder ah, will, will chant for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, Brian, right? Will you chant yeah. or will you do the languages? Yes, yes. That would be wonderful, Max. Thank you. Uh huh. Stani? Oh, no, there is no Stani. Carl? Pavel? Ray. Uh, hey, Ray. Yeah, I can try some chanting. Uh, All right. Okay, so. Then, Ray, are you chanting? Pavel, are you chanting? Or languages or blessings? Teresa? Okay, so, in which order do we want? I think Brian is best for starting. Mm -hmm. Then uh, would be a little bit of me, then would be Carl. Then would be uh, Jeet, and then would be Max. How about that? All right? So, so you Brian, want, you can start now. Okay, do you want to do languages or kind of like a little song in language? Like uh, a little song. Either um, way, we'll be welcome. Okay. Just give me a second here. Shirlioko. She kiliki, she uluku, 
shayani shuliya ke shiyalayo shraya ka no Being old as is, as be as being a, a child, going through the dark rooms, not seeing much, not finding the light is very sad. And the child is helpless and need help, and sometimes is desperate and cries. When you are in the dark, it's up to you to turn on the light. It's up to you to lit up the candle. It's up to you to lit, to lit up the, your heart. And when you turn on light, when you lit, light up your heart, the all light of the universe is yours. And you can let it in. You can let it shine. You can let it shine and lit up, light up all the rooms, all the universe surrounding you. When you light up, the world is shining. You have to shine from inside. And when you shine from inside, the world is shining and smiles to you. Stan, you, oh, Carl, you can, you can go. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Ha chima kayo, o tu sa na reyo, a mi ha kayare, o chi ha ma se. Thank you. Play, play, it's all the game. Play, play, it is all the game. You are one with the game. You are one with the universe. Look around, open, uh, lift up every leaf, and under every leaf you will find an angel. Under every, every leaf, leaf you will find God. You can go if you like. Thank you. All right. Let's all straighten our spines up through the back of our necks. Chin parallel to the ground. And let's breathe. And breathe. Let's flutter our eyelids till they are just about shut. And turn our gaze up towards our pineal gland. We'll go through three rounds of OM. Let's inhale and exhale. Let's inhale to begin.
Ulahaya, ulahaya, yena. Ulahaya, yahaya, yena, hunaha. Raina, hunaha. Raina, ulahaha, yena. Thank you all for being brave. Thank you, thank you all for being brave. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for uniting with us. Thank you for being yourself. Thank you for expressing yourself. Thank you for opening the doors. Now you have opened the doors. Choose to relax and to relax yourself into the doors. Allow yourself to enter the doors absolutely pure, without force, without fear, in unity with the creation. Enter the doors by allowing yourself just to be there. Allow yourself to be through and to recreate yourself in a new enlightened reality. Amen. And now the battery is out of charge. Thank you very much, everybody, for being with, having been with us. Bye, Brian. Bye, Carl. Bye, Thank you. Ray. Goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank guys. you, Max, for Bye. everything. Thanks. Appreciate all of you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Much love and light. Love. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Nice meeting you. Bye. See you. see you guys again. <laughs> hey. <laughs> all right. <sighs> Confirm.